Have you been censored on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever it might be? Have you seen censorship happening to you? Well, there's reasons a lot of those, those things happen and a lot of buzzwords and things that are just, they're going to get you in trouble. But what about the name of Jesus? Well, in a moment, I'm going to bring on somebody that is a newsmaker, and he recently had an experience with Facebook that we want to share with you. So I'm going to welcome Billy Hollowell from CBN News to Charisma News here. And uh, it's great to have you here. We've been talking beforehand and just a lot of really good connections there. But Billy, this whole thing with Facebook censoring you, um, what did you say? Let's just start with that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because you would assume when you get this alert pop up that says you've violated, you know, you know, hate speech paradigms right. that you've said something horrible. So here's what I wrote. And I wrote this on April 2nd. And I think that's important because it was a 40 day period that elapsed from the time that I get this alert um, from when I wrote this. I wrote, Jesus died so you could live. That is the message that I wrote. There's no link. It was just Jesus died so you could live. And that is what, you know, flagged this response from Facebook. And that response, just so you understand, I, I'm on my phone, I see it on my phone, I see it on the desktop. At first, I thought maybe it was a mistake. It was a joke. I'm like, what is this? I got this alert. It said your post goes against our community standards on hate speech. And I was I was shocked on hate speech on hate speech. Yeah. Did they describe what it was about that that phrase, Jesus died so you can live, is hate speech? You know, they didn't. What they did do, and they give you a little bit of information, and the wording is so strange. They said, no one else can see your post, which I'm like, wait, what? Um, we have these standards because we want everyone to feel safe, respected, and welcome. And then the message goes on to say, and this is the part that concerned me. If your content goes against our community standards, again, your account may be restricted or disabled. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, wait, so if if you arbitrarily decide that some other message like Jesus died so you could live is somehow a problem, you could disable my account. I had never had this happen. And I share messages like this all the time um, on that page. And then they say, hey, you can disagree if you want, which I did do. I then okay, good, good. Yeah. I then went through the process and asked them to review it. And so when they reviewed it, what did they come back to? So a couple of hours passed, and I laugh because it's so ridiculous. A couple hours passed, and I get another alert. We have removed your post from Facebook. So this is a new alert now. It's been removed. So they they saying that they're taking it down. Yes. And, it's, and then it says, and the best part about this, they remove it even from the preview. So you no longer see the message, right? That was a problem. It says post unavailable and that they're unable to show the content. Um, and then there's a little section on this alert that says what happened. It says your appeal was reviewed and your post does not follow our community standards for hate speech. So we're back to the hate speech again. Um, and there's really nothing you could do at that point. Yeah, you know, there, There's a little section you can go right, in right. and it says, hey, you know, you can go to this section and see your page health. Um, and so at that point, I was thinking, okay, they've now reviewed it. I'm, I'm thinking at the time, AI, right? Maybe artificial sure. intelligence. They're using some sort of system, which is probably what happened. And maybe the word died is what caught their attention. But okay. I found it particularly problematic that I've now gone through your system to have this reviewed. I would hope a person reviews it at that point, mm -hmm. And your review still finds that I've somehow violated hate speech standards. Wow. So this whole thing of, of hate speech is something that is, it's almost a nebulous term where it can be defined any way that anybody really wants to uh, get offended at. So as a Christian, what did that make you feel? Because I mean, obviously, like that is the core part of our faith. If you're going to boil it down, it's like if you boil, if you boil down John 316 even more, I mean, that's probably what your sentence is. I mean, right. I mean, John 316 is the gospel in a verse. And you went down even a, a step further and kind of, you know, put it into a, a headline and that's getting you in trouble. What, what, what did you feel? Did you feel like what's uh, just tell me what you felt? <laughs> I don't yeah, want to put any no, words I, in your I, mouth. No, I mean, I felt confusion at first. Right. And I'm thinking, cause the last thing I want to do is go out there and be this person who's complaining that I was discriminated against. I, I felt confusion and then worry. And my worry was, okay, there's two options here. Either 
either Facebook is using, and maybe there are other options I haven't thought of, but but maybe Facebook is using AI and this whole system is just messed up and they're capturing things they shouldn't, or Facebook is intentionally trying to crack down on these kinds of messages, which seems very strange to me. I know that we we obviously know there's bias in, in big tech. We've, we've probably all talked this to death, um, but this one in particular, I found shocking. And, and so I felt confused. I wanted to go back to their standards on hate speech. One of the things they had included in that first message were some of their standards. And to your point, it is a little arbitrary. You start going through it. Um, they, they, they actually allow hate speech if it's being used, and I have it in front of me, to challenge or raise awareness. So if I was taking somebody else's hate speech and putting it out there to say, hey, this is wrong, or to make a point, they would allow it. Um, but, but then they went into, hey, we don't allow attacks on race, ethnicity, religion, caste, physical or mental ability, gender, sexual orientation. And they gave examples of that, um, describing people as inferior or subhuman, animals or insects, using harmful stereotypes. I won't read them all, um, mocking victims of hate crimes. And I thought, well, is this message being targeted because it's saying Jesus died for you so that you could live? That if you don't believe in Jesus, I mean, that's the gospel, right? You don't If you don't believe in Christ and have a relationship with him, you're not going to be with him in eternity. Is, is that why? So I was confused, but then my, my mind was going and I'm not the type of person who likes to just let something sit. And so I reached out to the Facebook press department. Um, I also reached out to an individual that somebody had forwarded me to. And, you know, not surprisingly, nobody responded to me. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, maybe one day if we make enough fuss about this and Christians actually speak up uh, for, you know, the fact that we're being silenced. Uh, in a lot of different ways, uh, maybe will things maybe things will start being uh, being addressed a little bit more favorably for us. But we know that there is persecution that's coming, and we have to be ready for that. So, what are some things that you're doing to prepare yourself if you can't use this platform of Facebook anymore? Uh, what is it that you are are planning on doing to continue to speak the gospel? Yeah, you know, for me, that's what it's all about, right, is being able to speak the truth. And I think, you know, we live in a country that gives us the right to do that. And these issues are complicated because people are going to argue Facebook can make their own rules. They're a private company. You know, it is funny to me because those arguments that are made, they're not invalid. But when you make the same argument about a small town bakery or about some other co organization or company, suddenly they, they don't have the right to make their religious fueled decisions for themselves. But Facebook and Twitter do. They can keep you off the platform. But a bakery can't decline a cake. You know, I think it's interesting, uh, all of that debate and discussion. But for me, you know, I'm active on a lot of other platforms. I, you know, I want to be present and I want to be used however God wants to use me. But I think we have to talk about these things and be vocal about it, not because we're trying to be victims, but because at the end of the day, let's talk, let's move theology to the side for a minute, you know, just to make the point of we live in America we have a First Amendment, we've built a country, and, and bad ideas should lose out. If you think my ideas are bad, let's have a discussion about it. If you think my post is untrue about Jesus dying so we could live, then tell me what you think is the better idea. At the end of the day, the best idea wins. I think we've really been abandoning that as, as a country. We've allowed safe spaces and we've allowed emotion to dictate so much. And I think what I'm doing is I want to talk about that. That is an unhealthy, bad thing to allow emotion to drive all of these decisions. Um, but on the theological front, on the religious freedom front, um, where they merge, we have a First Amendment that protects our religious rights, that gives us the ability to speak out on these things. And we cannot take that for granted. I think we are living in a time where a lot of young people are being taught to not particularly love this country that gives us Scars and all, right, right? right? So many rights. And so I want to be vocal about that. I plan to. I think having these conversations and mm -hmm. look, Facebook, Facebook should either say, look, this was a mistake, which I have fine. I have grace for that if it was a mistake or or we intentionally did it and we won't do it again. But we have to hold people's feet to the fire on this. I really do believe that. Yeah, that's really good. And, you know, I saw the fact that you, you, you tweeted about this and that's how I saw it. And then other people brought it to my attention. And then we said, let's reach out to Billy himself and get his comments and, and talk about this. You know, when you look at our world today and you are seeing um, wars and rumors of wars and all these things that are happening and, you know, just political unrest, the economy, um, our world seems to be upside down. 
And, um, you know, how would you say that you would live a spirit filled life to overcome this upside down world? Yeah, I mean, it's upside down. It's inside out. It's crazy. I think when I when I look at the world, it's so easy to get overwhelmed and to get frustrated. And especially you mentioned politics, right? I think a lot of us because of the frustration of watching what is happening, particularly on the secular progressive side of things, there's a pressure. And when that pressure comes, if we're not deeply rooted in truth and scripture, it's very easy to be thrown off and to be thrown into a direction where we start to elevate politics or people or movements or ideas above the gospel. And so how do we navigate what feels like, and I guess it always is a, a march toward whether it's steady or it's moving fast toward the end, how do we navigate that? We navigate it by keeping scripture at the center, by keeping prayer at the center, by making sure that we're leading with our faith first always. And so for me, I've made a concerted effort this year. I'm reading through the Bible in a year. I'm I'm making sure that I'm that I'm solid so that when these things happen, when those fears creep in because of all of this unrest, we're able to navigate that by putting God first. So I think that's the key. And you know, look, we are called we are called not to win a culture war. Not that we shouldn't fight culture wars because they're worth fighting, but we're called to reach other people for the gospel. And so we've got to do that by living it. Amen. Amen. Well, Billy Hollowell, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the censorship that you've dealt with, but you're still speaking the, the truth of the gospel, that Jesus died so you can live. Thank you very much, Billy. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you. In an upside down world, there is only one way to stay grounded. Life is full of twists and turns, successes and setbacks. How can you reach your God-given potential and achieve your dreams? With over four decades of reporting on the move of the Holy Spirit around the world, Stephen E. Strang has firsthand experience of how the Holy Spirit has led him on a remarkable journey of faith and a successful life. In his new book, Spirit-Led Living in an Upside-Down World, he will invest his true life lessons into the hearts of readers as he reveals his secrets to having a successful life led by the Holy Spirit. Go to booksbystevestrang.com to pre-order your copy today.